Okay, in this video tutorial we're going to look at um, the, the cell membrane, or sometimes referred to as the plasma membrane, in a little bit more detail. Um, it's also worth noting that most of the organelles um, within more advanced cells, like eukaryotic cells, um, consist uh, have a similar structure, or have the same structure. Um, and that's why a lot of the, mem the, the organelles are referred to as membrane-bound organelles. So chloroplasts, mitochondria, all those things are membrane-bound organelles that essentially means they're made out of um, or have a layer of um, membrane surrounding them. Um, so if we look at uh, the simplest type of um, sort of lipid layers um, or bilayers, um, the simplest is you can probably think of as, as is, a, is called a micelle. This is basically how detergents work. So these are all made out of uh, molecules that we, we often refer to as phospholipids, um, where um, essentially you've got a hydrophilic or water-loving head and a hydrophobic um, uh, tail, so often a lipid tail, something that, that can't hydrogen bond with water. Um, so in this case, um, uh, a detergent, if you've got some, a fatty substance on your hand, a lipid, something greasy, um, the lipid tails will interact or bond with that, and all the, the hydrophilic um, charged heads will point outwards, um, and what that means is these can bond with, with water, so it makes these little bubbles um, relatively soluble in water, so they can be washed away. Um, so a liposome is very similar, it's just a, a slightly larger molecule, um, where you actually have a, the, the double layer. So this can technically be considered a bilayer because if you cut through, you've got one here and one on the other side. Um, whereas here, the, you know, you've got a bilayer um, right the way around. Um, but again, you've essentially got the hydrophilic uh, water-loving heads pointing um, on, on the out, outer layer, um, but also pointing inwards in a, in a second layer. Um, and so you can have a, an aqueous or water-loving um, hydrophilic uh, sort of interaction occurring on the, the outer edge um, and also on the inside. So you could have an aqueous or water-filled um, sort of contents on the inside here. And this is basically what, what a cell is, just on a much bigger scale. So on a cell we often reduce it to uh, look like this. So if we cut out a small piece of, of membrane, it would look like this. A double layer, a phospholipid bilayer. So each of these is a little phospholipid um, and here they're arranged into a bilayer, two layers. Um, and so you can uh, see the blue bits are the, the phosphate heads. So they're charged and they're hydrophilic. They're, they're water-loving. That means they can bond with water. Um, whereas the, the lipid tails are hydrophobic. They can't interact with water molecules. They're not charged and can't hydrogen bond. Um, so those are usually just... Um, um, alkane or alkene, sometimes there's double bonds in there, um, chains, um, so a carbon chain surrounded by hydrogen. Um, they can't hydrogen bond, um, and so they will interact with each other. So the, the bond between the hydrophilic, or the charged head, and the water molecules is much stronger and kind of excludes the lipid tails, so they form a, um, a layer within the middle. Um, and so this is the reason why often, um, I think, uh, under an electron microscope, um, the, the membrane can show up almost, it looks like two black lines. I think what you actually see is the phosphate heads um, and the, the sort of slightly lighter layer in the middle is the, the lipid tails. I, I could be wrong there, but I think that's, that's what it generally looks like under the um, electron microscope. Um, so think of it as, as kind of a sandwich and the bread on each side is the, the, the hydrophilic um, phosphate heads and the contents is the, maybe the, the butter um, is your lipid tails, maybe as a way to remember it. So this is called the flu fluid mosaic model, um, and that's basically because the phospholipids can move laterally throughout the membrane, um, whereas, um, so if I go back, uh, what we're talking about here is, what we mean by laterally is, is this one here could slide past or swap positions this phospholipid, could swap positions with the one next to it. So in this, in this view, they could move left or right. They can't move up or down. They can't come out of the layer or move into the layer, but they can move sideways within the layer. So that's what we mean by lateral movement of the, the phospholipids. Now, there are often 
uh, proteins which essentially float within the membrane, almost like icebergs floating within the, the water surface. So some are fixed to the cytoskeleton, a network of proteins inside the cell, and that prevents them moving around. But a lot of, a lot of proteins kind of float within the membrane surface. So again, they can't leave, they don't leave the membrane um, or move uh, up or down within the layer. They just float laterally. So just like an iceberg doesn't, you know, come come rising up out of the water or sink into the water, but it can float left and right within the, the, the water surface. Um, so some uh, proteins are embedded into the outer layer, some are embedded into the inner layer, and some span both layers. Um, so those are all kind of options. And it essentially depends on the properties of the, the protein. Um, so if we have a, a protein that, that spans the membrane, so if this is my bilayer here, so the red lines are maybe the phosphate heads, and we'll have all those lipid tails sticking into the middle here. I'm not going to draw them all. If we have a protein that spans the membrane, um, obviously it's going to have a, be made out of amino acids. Um, the amino acids on sticking out on this end will be hydrophilic, so they'll be able to hydro hydrogen bond with the water or maybe they're charged, and, and the same on this side, whereas the amino, ac the amino acids, on the, at least on the outside, on the surface of the protein, um, that are within the layer, sort of along... Um, let me just grab another colour. So the, the amino acids along this surface here um, and this surface here along the outer surface of the, the protein that's, or at least the part of the protein that's within the membrane, those would be hydrophobic um, amino acids, so they'll interact with those lipid tails. Um, so some, some proteins span, span the membrane completely, some are embedded in the, in the surface um, and, and can be either the inner or the outer surface. So one thing to remember, the, the membrane is about 7 nanometers thick um, and can only be seen at about 100,000 times magnification. So let's look at a little bit more at what some of the parts within the membrane actually are. So this is a, a fairly decent model of, the, um, of uh, uh, what we call the, the fluid mosaic model of, of um, the plasma membrane. Um, and you can see here, for instance, so they've, they're showing the, the detail of a protein here. Um, so you've got non-polar regions of the protein end up within the layer, whereas the polar regions or the hydrophilic regions in, can interact with water or bond with water, and so they stick out either can stick out either side. Um, so we, we can kind of you can almost use those terms interchangeably in biology. We can talk about non-polar or hydrophobic or polar as being hydrophilic, um, water-loving. Um, those terms can, can almost be used interchangeably um, in biology. So let's have a look at the, part, uh, the parts. So first off, basically the little white circles here with the white tails um, are your, your phospholipids. So we already mentioned those. Those are the key component, the, the core component of a membrane, is a phospholipid bilayer. But within that, let's start with, you can see these little yellow molecules. Um, so those molecules are, are cholesterol, which is essentially a type of lipid. So it's, it's similar in structure to the lipid tails, um, and essentially that's where it sits. It kind of packs itself in between some of those lipid tails. Um, and cholesterol plays a really important role in regulating membrane fluidity. Um, so what does that mean? Basically the more cholesterol there, there is in there, um, the, the greater the amount of cholesterol... Um, or the more cholesterol increases the, the membrane packing. So it enables these uh, hydrophobic tails to kind of pack together or bond more tightly. Um, and that means that increasing membrane packing um, makes the membrane less fluid. Um, why would you need the membrane to be more or less fluid? Well, the movement of the proteins through the fluid can be important, um, but it's also about the stability of the membrane. And so, for instance, if you look at fish in different climates and different te at different temperatures, fish that live in very cold waters um, have less cholesterol so that the, the membrane stays more fluid, um, and fish that live in tropical and warm waters will have more cholesterol to prevent the, the membrane from becoming, from becoming too fluid. Um, so cholesterol, the amount of cholesterol in the membrane helps to regulate um, the stability of the membrane. 
so it regulates membrane fluidity, which is important for the stability. Um, and it's also, I guess, um, it helps because you've got this non-polar hydrophobic layer in the middle that, and, and if it's packed together more closely, um, helps to prevent the movement of ions um, and other charged molecules um, or hydrophilic polar molecules from moving across the membrane. Um, so this is important, especially in, in cells like uh, neurons. Um, so our neurons have a myelin sheath, um, and that's rich in cholesterol. Um, and that, that helps to prevent um, ions moving across the membrane um, when they're not supposed to. There are channels that, that then enable that movement. Um, but essentially, that's, that's when we talk about electrical signals going down a neuron, uh, more specifically, it's, it's an... an um, biology, it's, it's usually referred to as depolarization. It's actually, you've got a whole bunch of ions on one side of the membrane move across the membrane, um, and that spreads as a sort of wave-like pattern. So the ones here, ions flow across, and that causes ions here to flow across, causes ions here to flow across, and it sort of spreads down across the surface of the membrane. Um, so controlling the, the movement of ions um, in in uh, neural cells is really important, and that's um, they have a, that's why they have a large amount of cholesterol in that myelin sheath. Um, so you'll see here we have proteins. Um, so proteins can act as uh, receptors to signaling molecules like hormones or neurotransmitters or other signal molecules. Um, they can also act um, as transport proteins. So they might provide essentially a tunnel where on the inside of the protein, so maybe if we look at these little spiral ones, maybe the, the amino acids that are facing into the, the little tunnel here um, are all hydrophilic, and so that will allow a certain, certain charged molecules to flow through. Um, and if you ask, well, what charged molecules? Essentially, it'll be based on the shape of that tunnel. It'll be um, that sort of keyhole effect that the, the shape of the tunnel and the charges on the inside will determine what can move through. So some of these act as um, transport um, proteins. So for instance, they might um, basically act as a, as a channel or a pore that lets certain charged or, um, charged or polar molecules through. Um, some of them are, uh, can actually be protein pumps, so they use ATP energy um, that's produced by, by cellular respiration to um, actually actively pump certain molecules across. Um, some of these proteins can be enzymes, they have enzymatic activity, so speed up or slow down certain reactions, um, and some of them are involved in um, intercellular joining, so joining cells together. Um, as well as cell cell, cell recognition. Um, some of the proteins uh, have carbohydrate groups added to them, um, as do some of the phospholipids. Um, so we, we call those glycolipids. So it's a lipid that has, um, think like glycogen, um, so it's got a carbohydrate group attached to the lipid, um, or glyco glycoproteins. So glycolipids um, are, are, I guess, the cholesterols or the, the phospholipids that have a carbohydrate, carbohydrate group added, um, and glycoproteins are proteins that have a carbohydrate group added. And those carbohydrate groups um, are also important. They can hydrogen bond with the water, so that helps to further stabilize the membrane, but they too can act um, as receptors, um, or um, a really important what we call antigens, the things that are recognized by the immune system and, and other cells. Um, and so different cell types within our body will have different proteins with different carbohydrate groups on their surface, and those are kind of a marker for what cell type it is and its function, and um, or, or indeed even just whether it or not it's... Uh, um, uh, it's part of the host, whether it's actually part of the person and not an invading um, bacteria and things. So we have certain uh, proteins and carbohydrate groups that are expressed on the surface of the cell that let our immune system know, hey, this is um, part of part of us. You know, leave leave that alone. Um, whereas um, bacteria and viruses won't have those things, and so that's a sign that it's something foreign and needs to needs the body needs to get rid of it.
Um, so those are, those are, I guess, the, the, the major parts of the membrane. Um, and just, just remember the fluid mosaic model is the, the idea that it's called a, a mosaic model. If you think of a mosaic are those, those pieces of artwork where they take very small pieces of tile and lay them out to kind of make up a picture. Um, so it's these, all these phospholipids are kind of the, the mosaic with the, the proteins in them. Um, and it's a fluid mosaic because things can move laterally throughout the, um, throughout the membrane layer. So lastly, membrane fluidity, just, just before we go, is also um, uh, regulated by how saturated and unsaturated the lipid tails um, are. So if they're unsaturated, um, it makes the membrane more fluid because unsaturated um, fatty acids, um, so on the, just grab a pen, so on the phospholipid, you've got the phosphate head, and then some lipid tails. And if it's uh, got a double bond in there, so if it's unsaturated, it will kink. Uh, and if it kinks, that means that they can't pack together as closely, um, making the, um, the, the intermolecular bonds, the intermolecular interactions between the lipid tails, not quite as strong. So you can imagine if I've got a phospholipid here with a straight tail, uh, the interaction here is going to be stronger than, say, if I have another one here which also has a bent tail. The interaction between the intermolecular bonds, um, so things like weak van der Waals forces and things, those weak uh, forces between these kinked molecules is, is going to be less, and that makes the membrane more fluid. So the, the more unsaturated fatty acids in the membrane, the more fluid it becomes, whereas the more... Um, uh, saturated fats in, in the membrane, the, the less fluid because they can pack together more closely. We've got stronger kind of intermolecular forces um, holding those, those tails together. So the proportion of saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids, the, the lipid tails on the phospholipids, um, are, are those fatty acids, um, regulates the membrane fluidity too. So more unsaturated, more fluid. Uh, more saturated, less fluid. Cool, I hope you found that helpful.